Hey everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. You hear the music. Hello, everybody. I'm Ed Robinson, and welcome to another exciting edition of the League Wraparound. This is the program that gets you caught up on anything and everything happening around the NFL. Coming up on this edition of the program, we have an interview with Sonia Greenfield. Sonia is the director of writer management and editor covering the NFC North and NFC East for Our Turf Football. Of course, Our Turf Football is a website that looks at the national, covers the National Football League from a woman's perspective. And on the program, we recap the Detroit Lions victory in the 2023 NFL season opener over the Kansas City Chiefs. Also, we talk about the Lions offense and defense. We discuss head coach Dan Campbell, of course, quarterback Jared Goff. And, of course, we'll preview the Lions next game against the Seattle Seahawks and so much more. So Sonia is always great whenever she comes on the show and uh, gives us great insight on her favorite team, the Detroit Lions, and much more. Plus, we'll preview Week two of the 2023 NFL regular season, we have your game picks, and of course, we'll give you the latest on Aaron Rodgers in just a bit. But first, hey, it's week one of the NFL season. Hey, we're underway, man, and it's a great time in sports right now, certainly a great time if you're a football fan. Let's start off with the Thursday night opener between the Detroit Lions and the Kansas City Chiefs. Close game, but Detroit would win 21-20. to in the Battle of Ohio, the Cleveland Browns had no problems with the Cincinnati Bengals, 24-3. The Baltimore Ravens took care of the Houston Texans, 25-9. In a close game in Minneapolis, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Minnesota Vikings, 20-17. In the NFC South showdown, the Atlanta Falcons took care of the Carolina Panthers, 24-10. The Washington Commanders edge out the Arizona Cardinals 20-16. to In the AFC South matchup, the Jacksonville Jaguars took care of the Indianapolis Colts 31-21. to The San Francisco 49ers had no issues taking care of the Pittsburgh Steelers 30-7. to The New Orleans Saints pulled off a close one by the skin of their teeth as they beat the Tennessee Titans 16-15. to in the AFC West matchup, the Las Vegas Raiders took care of the Denver Broncos, 17-16. to The Philadelphia Eagles hold on to beat the New England Patriots, 25-20. to The Los Angeles Rams would go on to beat the Seattle Seahawks in the NFC West showdown, 30-13. to Very good game out in Inglewood, California at SoFi Stadium between the Miami Dolphins and the Los Angeles Chargers. The Dolphins would hold on to win 36-34. to Jordan Love was impressive in his debut as, a, as the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers as the Jordan Love era begins in Green Bay. Packers beat their longtime rival Chicago Bears 38-20. to Sunday Night Football saw the Dallas Cowboys handling their business, taking care of the New York Giants 40 to nothing. And on Monday Night Football, a game of twists and turns, season-ending injury to Aaron Rodgers, Zach Wilson comes in, does what he needs to do, but the game goes into overtime. Xavier Gibson with the game-winning punt return touchdown, giving the New York Jets the victory in overtime over the Buffalo Bills, 22-16. to And it takes care of week one in the National Football League, a recap of the scores from the NFL in week one of the 2023 NFL season. All right, now I want to start off with my top three storylines. I want to start off talking about Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was the most anticipated storyline of this offseason. After 18 seasons with the Green Bay Packers, the Jets and the, and the Packers pulled it off. The trade happened. Aaron, no longer in Wisconsin, heads to the Big Apple, heads to the New York City, New Jersey area, and the hype was intense. The hype was out of this world. In the offseason, training camp, of course, if you watch HBO's Hard Knocks, you know about the situation where the hype was just in a feeding frenzy. You saw all of these celebrities coming to the New York Jets practices, such as Method Man, just to name a few. Also, John McEnroe, who is a diehard New York Jets fan, showed his support for Aaron Rodgers, not just New York City, but just 
everybody, all football fans, Jets fans, people from all walks of life were so excited for the Aaron Rodgers era to begin with the New York Jets. I was excited. I know everybody was excited. Aaron Rodgers has been one of my favorite, not just quarterbacks, but one of my favorite players for such a long time. And the hype leading up to the Monday night game at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey against the Buffalo Bills, man, it was a fever pitch. And looking at watching the game on television and seeing that sellout crowd, that stadium being packed to the rafters, man, it looked like an amazing atmosphere. And it was it was the precursor or it was a, a what was to come in that game. Well, as they say sometimes in life, things come and things go. And it only took four plays on the Jets' first possession. And just like that, the energy was gone. Aaron Rodgers after being sacked by Bills defensive end Leonard Floyd, landed awkwardly, winds up tearing his Achilles tendon, season-ending injury. And you talk about, I mean, that stadium was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. That's how it felt. And I wasn't at the stadium, but my energy was drained, too, when I saw that happen with Aaron being sacked. And then, of course, the injury happening, he got up briefly, and I saw him kind of limping. I said, okay, well, maybe, you know, he's going to shake it off a little bit. I don't know, maybe as a cramp or something like that. But the moment when I saw him sit back down and grab the back of his leg, I was like, oh, this is something serious. This is something serious. And, and then when, of course, when the medical, the Jets medical staff helped him off the field, and then when the card came, when they put him in the medical tent, I was like, hmm. This is not looking good, and then things went worse when they put him, they had him, they carted him off the field, and they showed him going off into the locker room, getting the X-rays and things of that nature, which we'll find later on the next day that he ruptured his Achilles tendon and was done for the year. Man, you talk about anticipation, you talk about hype, and you talk about everything that was invested into this. And my gosh, you. Sometimes it happens like that. You know, they say life sometimes is not fair. And professional sports, sometimes it's not fair either. And certainly we saw that this week with the injury to Aaron Rodgers, rupturing his Achilles tendon and, of course, being done for the season. So now with the Aaron Rodgers era, at least on hold, it's on hold for a minute. And Aaron made his first remark, first comments to the public via social media, specifically Instagram, where he said he was heartbroken in the wake of the Achilles uh, tear. He said he thanked his family and friends and everyone for reaching out to him. And he says that he will rise again. He says that the night, uh, and I say, quote, the night is darkest before the dawn, and I shall rise yet again. So the rumors and all of the skeptics and all of this stuff and they're saying that Aaron Rodgers is not going to be the same. Listen, this is from this is my opinion. This is how I feel about this. I think Aaron Rodgers is going to be better than ever. Listen, this guy is, has been a competitor for so long. He's not going to go out like this. He just won't. I don't see that happening. I don't see him just taking a back seat to this injury, this season ending Achilles injury. It's not going to happen. I don't see this happening. Aaron Rodgers is too much of a competitor for, for this to happen. A four-time league MVP, a Super Bowl champion, a Super Bowl MVP, countless Pro Bowls, I mean, countless accomplishments and achievements. It, the story just can't end like this for him in New York. And even Jets owner Woody Johnson said that the story is far from done. And it is far from done. The story is far from done. So, We'll follow up, and as the the days and the weeks and the months go by, we'll follow up. Of course, we'll follow Aaron through the surgery and the rehab and taking the next steps on when he'll be ready to get back on the field and play again. But his head coach, Robert Sala, said he would be shocked if Aaron retired, and I would be shocked too. A lot of football fans would be retired, but bottom line is, is that Aaron Rodgers is just too much of a – too much of a, a competitor, just too much of a a person to not, um, you know, just too, to go down like this. This can't happen. 
It won't happen. And I believe Aaron Rodgers is going to bounce back from this, and we'll just have to wait until next year, until 2024, for where the Aaron Rodgers era will resume, and hopefully it'll be much better. But, you know, tough break for the New York Jets, tough break for us football fans, us journalists, us broadcasters, podcasters. It's sometimes life is not fair, and certainly it's not fair in professional sports, but, hey, Aaron all Aaron went to the Instagram post and said he was heartbroken, but he said he shall rise. You know he shall rise again, and I believe he will rise again. It's going to take time. Again, at this age and stage in his career, and you know Achilles injuries are very tough. Just that healing process is tough, but I'm sure with Aaron's training and of course with sports medicine, I'm I'm pretty sure that he'll make a, a full recovery and he'll be ready to go for 2024. My next storyline is going to be the New York Jets. So after the Rodgers injury, Jets fans, football fans, the energy was just gone, at least for the time being. So after the Rodgers injury, out comes Rodgers, in comes Zach Wilson. Listen, the New York media for the, the past three years since Zach Wilson has been the quarterback of the New York Jets, they've been on him, especially last year when there was criticism about him not holding himself accountable for things and things going haywire and him just having this nonchalant attitude when it comes to certain things. So the pressure was definitely on Zach when he hit the field, but Zach seemed energized this year with Aaron Rodgers and – with Aaron Rodgers being a part of the team, Zach was able to learn under a veteran, learn the do's and the don'ts, and to mature very quickly. And we saw that in the preseason in training camp, the maturity being put in Zach Wilson. And Zach came in and played a decent game in the absence of, of Aaron Rodgers and the injury. Zach came in, he did what he needed to do to get the job done, but also give a give a whole lot of credit to the defense. Jordan Whitehead, three interceptions. Jordan White showed up and showed out in this game. And Zach Wilson again, he did enough. He was sufficient. He he sufficed. He was solid in in the wake of the circumstances that happened with the Rogers injury. So now you have Zach Wilson coming in. He's doing his best and. What turned the tide was in the fourth quarter. So as I mentioned earlier, the Jets' defense was very strong with uh, Jordan Whitehead in the three interceptions. Late in the fourth quarter, Wilson throws the touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson, and that immediately changed things. And Jets fans, again, with the defense and with the – of course, can't forget about Brees Hall in the running game. Defense, running game helped out tremendously – helped out Zach Wilson tremendously – and it goes to show you that football is the ultimate team sport. And give a lot of credit and a lot of kudos to the coaching of Robert Sala. I mean, to put up, you know, to have to deal with that injury to your your future Hall of Fame quarterback, you bring the third-year guy in, and then you have to maneuver things. I mean, that gives that's a test to great coaching right there. So long story short, the game goes into overtime. Xavier Gibson the undrafted rookie out of Stephen F. Austin returned a 65-yard punt for a touchdown, and the New York Jets would win the game in overtime, and Jets fans became revived and energized. And again, I was not there at the game, but watching it on television, Jets fans, football fans, broadcasters, journalists, wherever you may be, you felt that energy come back again because, again, when the Rodgers injury had happened, I mean, it was so quiet, you could hear a pin drop. But when the Jets got that touchdown, when the Jets, uh, Zach Wilson threw the touchdown pass to Garrett Wilson, and then, of course, with Gibson scoring the game winner in overtime, the energy came back. That energy came back. It was almost like a, 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 a somebody was revived and brought back to life. That's what it was, that atmosphere in New Jersey with, the Jets fans and loving their team and just it was like okay wow bittersweet we lost Rodgers but guess what we have Wilson doing what he needs to do defense and the running game are holding up and then boom Xavier Gibson returns a punt return returns a punt for a touchdown giving the New York Jets the victory in overtime 22 to 16 so 
Man, you talk about twists and turns in that Monday night game, and speaking of twists and turns, so now what's next for the New York Jets? So Aaron Rodgers, done for the year. Zach Wilson, for the time being, is giving the keys to the car. And what Zach does have going for him this time is that he's got a running game that can help him out. He's got Brees Hall, and Brees looked fantastic in the Monday night game against Buffalo. Dalvin Cook can get you point can get you yards not just on running but receiving as well you've got a defense that played great on monday night jordan whitehead with the three interceptions quinn and williams was effective as well so the jet again and a, a robert sala like robert sala says listen aaron is a great player future hall of famer but we have 52 other guys that can do the job as well don't write the obituary on us we still have a lot of a lot of games to be played, and there are a lot of games to be played. But man, when you when you had Rogers coming in, it, it changed everything. Not just that organization, but just the Jets fans, the New York area. It, it changed a lot. But as they say, the show must go on, and the show will definitely go on in the NFL. And Robert Sala will has will make the necessary adjustments. And going forward, Zach Wilson. There's going to be that guy. He's going to have to deliver. And for my last storyline is going to be natural grass. All right. So when the field, and I'll just be honest with you on this. When they first started implementing, the National Football League started implementing the field turf, I was not a fan of it at all. I was like, okay, you would take this, sub, you would take this surface, right, and you would use, you would create it out of used tires, right? Now you're saying now the play is faster. A lot of players say that playing on field turf is faster. However, remember the surface, you know, it's not natural grass. It, it's synthetic. It's made from used rubber. So, and I've heard some players even complain is that when you're running and you're tackled, this eyes and it can it can be an unpleasant feeling. And artificial turf. Listen, the horror stories of players playing on artificial turf, getting brush burns, severe injuries. Yeah, the game was faster, but a lot of players paid the price for playing on artificial turf. Never was a fan of it. I always thought the game should be played on grass, you know, less injuries. Um, the game may not move as faster, but, hey, you have less injuries, and the players are protected. Well, the NFLPA, the, Na the National Football League Players Association, has reviewed a call and say that all NFL stadiums should return to playing on natural grass. This is in the wake of the Aaron Rodgers Achilles injury on Monday night. And some folks from the players uh, from the players union, the players association, I should say, specifically executive director Lloyd Howell is saying that the Rodgers injury had a lot to do with the playing surface being on field turf. And it makes it makes a whole lot of sense. Again, playing on grass is so much better. The game does not move faster. However, you have less injuries. It's not so much of a wear and tear on the players. And playing on grass is just a, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Now, Commissioner Roger Goodell is saying that they're still going to have to view the data, look at the science, and all of the things that comes with this, right? And, you know, According, I'm, I'm looking at this right here. According to a study, non according to a study, non-contact injury rate higher on artificial turf. The rate, the injuries, the non-direct contact injuries have gone up on synthetic surfaces, which are which is what I talked about earlier with the field turf, as opposed to on grass. Your non-contact injury rate is much lower on grass as opposed to field turf or any synthetic um, synthetic surface. Bottom line is this. We have to, the NFL has got to get back on natural grass. We've seen a lot of ACL injuries on the field, on that surface, on the field turf. Perfect example, Baltimore Ravens running back J.K. Dobbins this past Sunday against the Houston Texans out for the season, tearing an ACL. The same thing happened with Aaron Rodgers tearing his ACL. There's been a lot of ACL injuries that have taken place within the last several years as a result of playing on this surface. And the Players Union, I mean, something has got to give. They've lobbied this for years. 
They've lobbied this for years, ever since, I mean, even when the days are playing on artificial turf and now they graduated to the field turf, the players' union has said, look, we want to play on grass. It's better, it's safer, it's healthier for the players, it's less wear and tear. It's just, it's it's better all around. And unfortunately, I don't know the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Again, I'm not, I don't work at the front office. I'm not in the commissioner's office. I'm not a part of any associations or anything like that. But the bottom line is this. There has to be grass. The game is just be- played better on grass. It, it's just that simple. It's no questions asked. Major- I mean, I know it's kind of split amongst the players, but the overall majority of the players feel that playing on grass is is good. Playing on grass is fine. It's it's better, it's less wear and tear, and it just makes for a better product. And most importantly, it keeps the players healthy. I mean, it's you know, football is already a, a contact sport, can be a violent sport at times as well. You know, to soften that blow, it's better to have a better playing surface and have them playing on natural grass. All right, that's my top three storylines. All right, before we go to break, a former NFL network, network reporter, Jim Trotter, is suing the NFL, suing the league, on uh, racial discrimination and also is involved in this lawsuit trotter claimed trotter alleges that his contract was not renewed by the nfl network due to him addressing concerns to roger goodell at a super bowl press conference um, some, about several years ago where he addressed the nfl in terms of the lack of diversity also lack of inclusion whether it not just more so in other positions such as management and other front office positions. And he also alleges that Buffalo Bills owner Terry Pagula and Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones made some racial uh, comments, very disheartening. So that's all a part of the lawsuit. Let me be the first to say on this, mad respect for Jim Trotter. Jim Trotter is one of the most respected, one of the most tried and true journalists in the industry. Fan of his work. I remember when he worked at ESPN and then Curtin and his work at the NFL Network. Now, as far as with him and the, um, I don't know, trying to lobby to, I don't know if he's lobbying to try to get his job back. I mean, he currently works at The Athletic. I think this is a, a litmus test for what we can study in this situation pertaining to him. I'll just say it like this. You have to create your own. It's just that simple. I know uh, not just with Jim, but I think a lot of people have been lobbying the NFL for more diversity and more inclusion, having more people of color, more African-Americans involved in front office positions from management to personnel and things of that nature. This has been going on for far too long, and I think the only way that you can soften the blow or solve this problem is that you're going to have to create your own, have your own league, have your own media companies or maybe go to video sharing websites if you're not interested in start starting a business or wanting the daily grind of things of that nature it's always best to just have your own and i just really feel you know it's kind of like going around in a circle and just going back and forth and there's really no no answers no solutions i mean the rooney rule yeah the rooney rule i mean it's hey listen it effective not necessarily. It suffices, but it's not effective. But the only way you can really solve this problem is just, like, hit them where it hurts in, in, the, in the wallet. Hit them where it hurts, not just with economics, but most importantly, maybe having your own NFL or maybe starting your own league or starting your own business or even if you're not comfortable dealing with the grit and grind and the daily pressures of starting your own league, hey, there's video sharing websites, social media, where you can deliver the information and say how you feel on certain situations. But bottom line is this, uh, former NFL Network reporter Jim Trotter suing the NFL on r- r- alleged racial discrimination. He feels that the racial discrimination cost him his job at the NFL Network. He alleges that his con- they promised him that his contract would be renewed, but Evidently, that was not the case. And then also, he alleges racial racial comments were made by Buffalo Bills owner Terry Pagula and Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. So 
We'll stay tuned for that. And also, we had a Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins was released by the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Lyle is, um, again, you know him, began his career with the Dallas Cowboys. He played at LSU. And when he got signed by the Cincinnati Bengals, that was big news right there because he made a comment, and I'm paraphrasing here, where he told he said something in reference to Joe Burrow where he said, you got a bodyguard now. I'll protect you. Well, um, that didn't last long because the NFL, as uh, Jerry Glanville says, the NFL stands for not for long, and not for long will you have a job. And certainly he didn't have a job for that long in Cincinnati. So Cincinnati Bengals, again, releasing not offensive lineman Lyle Collins. And um, some te- there's a lot of teams out there that are going to need an offensive lineman. There's a lot of teams that are going to be searching, looking for pass protection in this quarterback-friendly league specifically in this NFL where it's um it's catered to the quarterback. So certainly certainly uh it won't be long before Mike for uh Lyell has a job. But man, I was really looking forward to seeing more of him in Cincinnati. I mean the Bengals spent a lot of money on an offensive line, bringing in guys like Alex Kappa and of course bringing in Lyell Collins and you know so But unfortunately, that didn't work out. So, again, Lyle Collins released by the Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, before we go to break, before we go to our interview with Sonia, excuse me, with uh, Sonia Greenfield, some terrible news to pass along to you. Former NFL wide receiver Mike Williams passed away at the young age of 36. Mike Williams, of course, he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, also played for the Buffalo Bills and was on the practice squad for the Kansas City Chiefs. Williams had passed away due to injuries from a construction accident. And again, our our thoughts and prayers are with the family of Mike Williams. Again, former NFL wide receiver Mike Williams passing away at the young age of 36. We'll have the interview with Sonya Greenfield coming up. We'll be right back. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. La venta de un día en Macy's comienza mañana con ofertas del día increíbles en novedades para el otoño, como un 40% menos en ropa de oficina que también funcionan fuera de horario y un 40-60% menos en zapatos, carteras y accesorios para terminar cualquier look. Y ahora un 25 a 40% en tus favoritos de belleza, cuidado de la piel y fragancias. Además, recibe envío gratis con cualquier compra por internet de 25 dólares o más en Macy's. Ahorros sobre precios en oferta de liquidación aplican excepciones. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Before Sarah discovered Chumbacasino.com, she enjoyed chamomile tea. Come on, big jackpot. And being in PJs by six. Let's go. The new fun Sarah often thinks about the old boring Sarah. Yes. And wonders if that Sarah ever really existed. Chumba Casino has over 100 casino style games. So join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Before Sarah discovered ChumbaCasino.com, she enjoyed chamomile tea. Come on, big jackpot. And being in PJs by six. Let's go. The new fun Sarah Woo-hoo! often thinks about the old boring Sarah. Yeah. And wonders if that Sarah ever really existed. Chumba. Chumba Casino has over 100 casino style games. So join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. No purchase necessary. We're by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. 
With Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Third and six. Goff. Across the ground to the end zone. Detroit touchdown. This is third and six. Long throws across. It is intercepted on the deflection. Brian Branch, the rookie, ties the game with his first NFL touchdown. Nine of the drop. Montgomery with some momentum to the end zone for the touchdown. David Montgomery third and two. Montgomery shifting forward has the first down at the twenty yard line. Kansas City takes its final timeout with a minute forty two remaining. Out of timeout to the Detroit Lions are right there. Indeed, it was right there. Welcome back to the program, everybody. That audio is courtesy of NBC Sports and NBC Universal. And the Detroit Lions handling their business on opening night of week one of the 2023 NFL season, coming into Arrowhead and in the season opener, upsetting the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs. Final score, 21-20. to To talk more about that game as well as the Lions' next game, against the Seattle Seahawks. Let's welcome her back to the program. She's a diehard Detroit Lions fan, and she's the director of writer management and editor for Our Turf Football, which is a website dedicated to covering the National Football League from a woman's perspective. Sonia Greenfield. Sonia, welcome back to the program. Welcome. Thank you for having me back. I'm so glad to be back so soon. Well, hey, we had to get you back on, man, because your Lions, they did the unthinkable. They came to Arrowhead. They went to Arrowhead, I should say, and one of the toughest places, not just in sports, but specifically in the NFL, they handled their be- their business, beating Patrick Mahomes and the defending champion Kansas City Chiefs 21-20. to So, Sonia, give me your takeaways from the Lions' victory over the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, so I think the biggest thing that they did for me was that They had some mistakes early, not going to lie, but they were able to overcome them. And in the past, the Lions um, had not been able to do that. And they had a culture of, you know, eh, couldn't do this. But the fact that they were able to kind of overcome some of their mistakes, their rookies really did such a good job. Um, BB with the interception and the pick six, I mean, that really got them fired up. It was it was one of those games where we were, as Lions fans, I think a lot of us were just kind of like, this isn't going to happen, is it? Like, this couldn't really be about to happen because so many strange things have always happened to the Lions. Overall, they had a couple mistakes at the beginning of the game, but they were able to come back, regroup. They focused on what they needed to do, and they made it happen, and that's what you want to see out of this team this year. So it was a great game. I was really excited, really impressed by them. So, yeah, it was a great game. Indeed, it was a great game, and I was very surprised on how close it was the whole time. And Detroit, they hung in with the defending champs handling their business, beating the Chiefs 21-20. to I want to talk about – Start off with the running game for a moment. David Montgomery, who played for the NFC North rival Chicago Bears for many seasons. Now, this is his first year with the Detroit Lions. He had 21 carries for 74 yards and a rushing touchdown in this game. Give me your thoughts on David and his play against the Chiefs. Um, Again, he um, did a very good job. I like he started off slow again, but he just came on at the end and kind of just became that guy that we needed to break um to get that those those runs in because they were meaningful runs, especially when he ran in for the touchdown and so it was really nice to see him play and kind of grind it out because he was really being tough out there against 
towards the, the um, second half of the game. And so I really enjoyed watching him and just making things happen. And I think that was probably another big takeaway is that the Lions were able to make things happen this game. Yeah, there was something. One of the things that the Lions wanted to work on this year was the running game. Of course, when you add Montgomery and then you have Jameer Gibbs in the mix as well, they certainly wanted to open that up. And David did enough and handled his business getting a touchdown and making key plays when necessary in this game. I want to talk about just on the receiving side for a moment, Josh Reynolds. He had four catches for 80 yards. Give me your thoughts on Josh and his play in this game. Um, really good, um, solid receiving play out of him. I was really kind of anxious to see what he was going to do. I wanted to see, you know, kind of a little bit more growth from last year. And, again, this is our first game, so there's things that are, you know, coming. But I really liked what I saw from him and, you know, kind of being that go-to for Jared Goff. So that was really good. I liked what I saw from him. Um, he was able to contribute, and that's really all I want to see. All right, indeed, he did contribute. And also, let's stay on the receiving side for a moment. Amon Ra St. Brown. Listen, Amon Ra, the last several years, we've talked about him and how he's developed and continued to develop his game to a whole nother level, and he made his contribution felt with six catches, 71 yards, and a touchdown. Just give me your thoughts on Amon Ra and his play. I've always liked, I mean, we've always talked about Amon Ra and how um, he's just been such a solid um, upcoming wide receiver. And I think, you know, this is going to be his almost breakout year. I think that he's going to have a very good season. Um, again, I think they were just kind of getting started on on Thursday night. But I think that this is going to be a very good season for him, getting some favorable matchups. And I see him kind of being the guy on this team. And I think that he has earned that and he deserves to be that guy. All right, absolutely. He's definitely earned that right. And somebody that's trying to earn his right at the tight end position, Sam Laporta, the rookie, five catches for 39 yards. Just give me your thoughts on Sam and his play. Um, I think he played overall pretty well. Um, the tight end position has always kind of been a little wonky, I would say, with the Lions. That's my, that's my new word this year is wonky. But, yeah, it's always been a little wonky, but I like to see more out of that position us to be able to get, you know, a, a strong go-to kind of guy. And I think that he will eventually get there. I think if he up with this offense and if we keep dialing up plays for him, I think he'll get to be that reliable tight end that we can defend or depend on. And also, you know, bring some bring some good, you know, run blocking and almost kind of that extra offensive lineman kind of guy, but I think that he will be a very good tight end, a very good versatile tight end for us. All right, and somebody that's been a versatile player so far for the Lions in a short amount of time, Jameer Gibbs, another rookie. He had seven carries for 42 yards in this game. Just give me your thoughts on Jameer and his play. Again, I like him. I like what they're doing with the running game and just kind of giving everybody a fair chance to spread that. We've got talent now, and that's one thing that we haven't been able to say for a while in multiple positions on our multiple running backs on this team. And so I really like what they've done with the running back position. And even though it has been a little bit more of a tough spot, I think Jameer Gibbs is going to be really great on this team and a very valued um, part of this offense, and I really like what he's done and doing, and I think that he's going to be a very good running back. Yeah, definitely sky's the limit for him, and just really that whole Lion offense. We're going to get more more back into the offense in just a little bit, but I want to talk briefly about the defense for a moment. Certainly a play that changed the course for the Detroit Lions in the opener against Kansas City, Brian Branch. Branch, of course, of Chiefs wide receiver Kadarius Tony. The, bo the ball was thrown to him by Patrick Mahomes. The ball comes off of Tony's hands, and guess what? Brian Branch is there to make the play, intercepts it, picks yeah. six, and gets a touchdown. Give me your thoughts on Brian and that play that changed the fate for the Lions to help beat the Chiefs. That was such a heads-up play, and he was so in the right by at the right time, and that's just, you know, that's coaching, but that's also just instinct. He was just kind of there 
I mean, Kadarius did not have his best, obviously, but that's what the Lions kind of need to start doing, right, is capitalizing on those mistakes, and that's what we needed to see. And so Brian Branch with that pick six, that was right what the doctor ordered, and just being able to capitalize off mistakes is one thing that the Lions haven't done. And so Brian, I think, is that kind of got him fired up to see more things like that happen. Absolutely, and it definitely, again, we talked about the offense, but the defense definitely has got to step up big as well. And definitely when you have Brian Branch and other gentlemen on the team, they definitely can make the difference in helping Detroit become a complete team this year. And Alex Anzalone, Jerry Jacobs, and C.J. Gardner-Johnson all had five tackles in this game. And, man, C.J. was just anywhere and everywhere, especially out in the secondary. Just give me your thoughts on this gentleman and their play game against the Chiefs. Um, CJ was amazing and very impressive and just like everywhere where he needed to be. And so that's what, you know, you like to see. And that defensive unit just coming together. Like I said, Alex Anzalone, I want to see more consistency from him this year. And so this is a very good place to start. Um, and I see, you know, all of them working together and just becoming a tough defensive unit. And I like what Aaron Glenn is doing with them and bringing together and just, you know, becoming that reliable defensive unit. I can't wait to see more of that next week. All right, rightfully so. And speaking of somebody that is continuing to prove his worth, Jared Goff. He completed 22 out of 35 passes for 253 yards and a touchdown pass. And I tell you one thing, Jared was solid, made plays when he had to, and he didn't let the noise and he didn't let the disruption of the fans at Arrowhead get to him. He came in and he was sharp. He was razor sharp in this game. We give, I give him his credit where credit is due. Jared came in and made the plays and definitely made some key passes. Give me your thoughts on Jared's play against Kansas City. You know, like you said, it is a very tough place to come in and win in all props to, you know, the Kansas City fans and the Kansas City just environment, it's it's tough. But he was able to manage it and to just kind of, you know, he was the noise didn't bother him. And he just, you know, did what he needed to do. He played a very clean game, a very mistake-free game, and just, you know, made the plays, made the passes, and did what he needed to do, kind of manage that game. And, you know, this is kind of like the Super Bowl, Jared Goff, that we, I mean, he didn't do well in the Super Bowl, but he's been in that kind of loud environment. So, you know, I'm hoping that he kind of pulled on and relied on that experience to kind of help him here. But he played a very good game, and that's what we need as a game manager, somebody who's not going to make a lot of mistakes, things like that. And so that's what I saw out of Jared, just some clean play. And just he was really good that day. He was really good. Yeah, Jared definitely handled his business. And like you said, Sonia, he played mistake-free, didn't do too much. And then if you know about Kansas City, you know it's a tough place to play. But he definitely held his composure. He held his own and was able to be effective in the victory. And Dan Campbell, listen, this is year three for Coach Campbell. And now this is taking the next step and getting over the next obstacles and over the next hurdles. And so far, he jumped a major hurdle beating the defending champion, Kansas City Chiefs, in week one. Just give me your thoughts on Coach Campbell and his strategy and being successful in the win. You know, I think um, that was a very big step. That was probably his biggest win, I think, so far of his career, is to go in and um, beat the Chiefs at – Arrowhead Stadium. And, you know, people, you know, the Mike Tirico's of the world, well, there's an asterisk because, you know, Chris Jones is out and Travis Kelsey was out. Okay, that's great. But the Lions did what they needed to do. Regardless of who played, they beat the team that was in front of them. That's what they needed to do. And they did that. Um, and I think that's a big statement. Um, Dan Campbell said it himself to the players, you know, I believed in you guys. I knew that you could do this. We knew that we could do this. And so I think that that is really changing the culture in Detroit and that it's getting built brick by brick and little by little. And wins like this go a long way to, you know, taking the Lions to the next level, which is something that's going to, that's expected of them this year. Um, you know, to get up into the playoffs and to get that first playoff win and, 
this, I think, is a big step forward in that um, progression. Absolutely. And, hey, the sky's the limit, and it's going to be a long season. Again, it's not a sprint, but it's a marathon, and so far, so good. Coach Campbell and the Detroit Lions being successful in week one. All right, so, Sonia, let's jump ahead now to week two, where we have the Detroit Lions. They're going to be at home. They're going to have their first home game of the year going up against the Seattle Seahawks. So Seattle didn't do well in week one against their division rival in the NFC West, the Los Angeles Rams. Matthew Stafford went up to the Pacific Northwest and handled his business and decimated that Seattle secondary. So now let's start off with Detroit's defense. So we mentioned some of the, the key players on the defensive side with Anzalone and Jacobs, also C.J. Gardner-Johnson. You can't, you can't forget about Aiden Hutchinson, just to name a few. But on the right. offensive side for Seattle, they've got Geno Smith. They've got Kenneth Walker the third, D.K. Metcalf. Hey, what more can you say about him? Just give me your thoughts on the Lions' defensive strategies for, to try to stop Seattle's offense. Um, I have a strange feeling that they're going to be going after Gino. I think they're going to probably send um, Aiden Hutchinson really after him and really try and beef up that pass rush and just kind of get him to make some bad decisions. I see that that I see that that can happen. Um, also, I also think that they're going to try and contain the run, and um, they were able to do that for the most part um, in Kansas City. So I don't see why. They're not going to be able to contain Kenneth Walker the third. Great, great player. I think him and DK Metcalf are very good players, and so you know they'll get the respect. But I also think that this team now has more confidence than they had at the start of the season, which you know a game ago. But I think that they are. I mean, they're going to be back at home with their fans. It's going to be loud. I see them really going after Seattle. Yeah, that's definitely going to be interesting right there. You mentioned about Aiden Hutchinson and the rest of the D-line giving Geno Smith and that offensive line the blues, and they're definitely going to take advantage of that pass rush right there, especially in that home opener going to be taking place in the Motor City. All right, let's switch over now to Detroit's offense. So we know about Goff and Gibbs and Montgomery and St. Brown and also with Reynolds, just to name a few. Seattle's defense, mm -hmm. they've got some – Pretty good uh, players on their squad, too, now with the likes of Aquandre Diggs, also Tariq Woolen, and you can't forget about Bobby Wagner. I mean, he's yep. been basically the stalwart of that Seahawk defense. So what do you expect the strategy to be for Detroit's offense to get points against Seattle's defense? Um, I, I expect them to kind of pull some tricks out. Um, I think that Dan Campbell just is a guy who, you know, likes to likes to surprise things, likes to shake things up a little bit. So I have some ideas, or I think that they're just going to probably pull out some fake plays and some trick plays and stuff like that that they've been working on just to kind of keep that defense on their toes. I mean, they – they respect the Seattle defense because that defense has been, you know, one of the best ones in the league. But I think that, you know, Dan Campbell likes to switch it up, likes to throw in a few, <laughs> likes to give them a few razzle-dazzles. So I, I can see that happening to keep the defense on their toes. Indeed, it's going to be a little razzle-dazzle on the offensive side. And it's definitely going to be more than just razzle-dazzle. It's going to be a ruckus environment in the Motor City as the Detroit Lions have their home opener of the 2023 NFL season against the visiting Seattle Seahawks. And again, you heard it from us. She's Sonia Greenfield, the Director of Writer Management and Editor for Our Turf Football. Again, Sonia, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us on the program. Just tell everybody what's going on with you over at Our Turf. Um, so, yeah, so we have our weekly podcast on Tuesdays, um, and you can stream it live on YouTube. So if you go to our YouTube channel, Our Turf Football, you can catch us live every Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, and, you know, we talk about what's going, what happened this week and or the past week. And so tomorrow will be our first one where we get to break down actual NFL games, so please make sure you check us out there. You can check us out on Twitter, Our Turf FB. 
Um, and, you know, we retweet all the stuff. We talk. We like to interact. We ask a lot of questions, all that good stuff. So we are there. We also have our website, archerfootball.com, um, where you can see some of our articles where we do write. And then we also, um, that's where also our podcast episodes go as well. So you can catch us pretty much everywhere. We are around. Um, yeah. So please, we'd love to interact with you when you come to our YouTube channel um, and you watch our podcast live there. You can interact with us, ask us questions. We'd love that. So yeah, look for us. Absolutely. And one more time, Sonia, tell everybody where they can find you on social media as well as Our Turf Football and any websites. Let the listeners know that as well. Sure. So you can find me on Twitter. Um, at mom, the number two, the number three, R-N. Um, our turf you can find on Twitter as well, and that's our turf FB. Um, and, you know, we tweet the NFL news. We give our, give our reactions, things like that. We tweet on game day. Um, we sometimes pick a game just and kind of live tweet it and interact with you guys during the games. Um, you can find us on our YouTube, our turf football. Um, where you can watch our podcast live. But, yeah, you can see us anywhere. We love it. Awesome. And you heard it from her. She is Sonia Greenfield, the director of writer management and editor for Our Turf Football, which looks at the National Football League from a woman's perspective. So check her out and check them out as well at Our, as our, at our Turf Football. Sonia, as always, again, thank you so much for taking time to be out of your busy schedule to be on the program. If you want to come back on, just feel free to let us know. Oh, for sure. Thank you so much for having me back on, Ed. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. I appreciate you as well. We'll be back with more right after this. 36 shot. A cross. He fell to the end zone. Detroit touchdown. This is 36. Malone throws the cross. And intercepted over the section. Brian Branch, the rookie, ties the game with his first NFL touchdown. With the momentum to the end zone for the touchdown. David Montgomery, third and two. Montgomery shifting forward, has the first down at the 20 yard line. Kansas City takes its final timeout with a minute 42 remaining. Out of timeout to the Detroit Lions are right there. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Order like a Jaguar at Raising Cane. With tailgates of hand-battered chicken fingers and cane sauce and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade, you can guarantee victory for every game day meal. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. <laughs> Official chicken of Southern Athletics. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Order like a Jaguar at Raising Cane's. With tailgates of hand-battered chicken fingers and cane sauce and jugs of freshly made tea and lemonade, you can guarantee victory for every game day meal. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. <laughs> Official chicken of Southern Athletics. 
Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a hundred casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Before Sarah discovered ChumbaCasino.com, she enjoyed chamomile tea. Come on, big jackpot. And being in PJs by six. Let's go. The new fun Sarah. Woo! Often thinks about the old boring Sarah、yes. and wonders if that Sarah ever really existed. Chumba. Chumba Casino has over a hundred casino-style games, so join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. Eighteen plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Once again, a big special thank you to Sonia Greenfield, director of writer management and editor covering the NFC North and NFC East for our turf football. Again, a big special thank you to Sonia for appearing on the program, talking about her beloved Detroit Lions and the victory over the Kansas City Chiefs in the 2023 NFL season opener from Week One. All right, everybody. Let's do this now. It's time to give you a preview of the most important games for Week Two of the 2023 NFL regular season. AFC North showdown between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. First for Baltimore, they're licking their wounds, losing their running back J.K. Dobbins for the remainder of the year due to an ACL injury. However, Baltimore they've got Lamar Jackson. They've got the defense. Odell Beckham is solid. Mark Andrews is solid. Baltimore is going to be just fine. As for Cincinnati, man, no one saw this coming. Only scoring three points against the against the、uh, the Cleveland Browns. No one saw this coming. No one saw Joe Burrow only throwing for eighty two yards. I would have never I would have never guessed that in a million years. But hey, it happens in professional sports. It happens in the NFL. So. The Cincinnati Bengals. It's their home opener. They've got a, a <laughs> they've got a lot riding on this, and especially when you have a rivalry game, a, a AFC North or a AFC North rivalry game, so early in the year, man. This is this is about as intense as it gets. And when you've got the marquee players, specifically the quarterbacks, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, and of course we can't forget about Zay Flowers, right? Zay Flowers did his thing in the win against the Houston Texans. You put Zay Flowers in the mix as well, so this is going to be.、Uh, hey, Cincinnati's going to have it on their mind in this game when you've got Joe Burrow going up against Lamar Jackson and a whole host of stars in this game. The Seattle Seahawks take on the Detroit Lions. So for the Seahawks, embarrassed in the、uh, in the NFC West rivalry game against the Los Angeles Rams,、uh, Matthew Stafford. Did a number on him going to the Pacific Northwest, handling his business. The Seahawks had no answers for him. Hopefully, Seattle will be able to turn things around. As recently during the week, the Seahawks would sign offensive lineman Jason Peters. Yes, 41 years young, Jason Peters. Jason Peters, listen, man. We talk about Tom Brady playing for such a long time. Well, Jason Peters, you can put him in that same category as well. He's played for a long time, so many years. He had so many great seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles. He played a little while for the Dallas Cowboys. I believe he had a stint with the Chicago Bears as well, and now recently signing this week with the Seattle Seahawks. So hopefully that'll ease the tension a little bit off that offensive line. To be given Geno Smith pass protection because they're going to need it. We don't know the status of Tyler Lockett. He suffered a concussion, so we don't know the status of him in this game. But they've got DK Metcalf. They've got Kenneth Walker. They've got Geno Smith, and of course on the defensive side, Bobby Wagner, who's just a still a, a tried and true veteran, and still making、uh, key plays for the Seahawks, for the Detroit Lions. Hey, I said it before, and I say it again. I think Detroit will be one of the X factors in this NFL season. Head coach Dan Campbell and his team—they're riding a high right now. They went to Arrowhead, beat the defending champions. Jared Goff played an effective game. Jameer Gibbs was solid on the running side. David Montgomery was solid on the running side. On the receiving side, 
Amon Ross St. Brown. He's definitely deserving of a contract extension. And also you got Josh Reynolds and company. So this is going to be Detroit's home opener, Seahawks-Lions. This is going to be a festive game. It's going to be a rocking crowd in the Motor City. We've got the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Kansas City losing the kickoff opener against the Detroit Lions in, in a close fashion. You know Andy Reid, he's not going to stand for that at all. Patrick Mahomes, you know, he's not going to stand for this at all either. And a lot of their players won't stand for this at all. Chris Jones, he returns to the team after his holdout. He signs a, a one-year extension with incentives included in the deal. So hopefully Kansas City's defense will be much better in this go-round, especially going to a, a tough environment the last couple of years in the NFL and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence put up solid numbers against the Indianapolis Colts. Travis Etienne was effective as well. Jackson and Calvin Ridley, welcome back to the NFL, Calvin Ridley, after having your year suspension with the gambling. Welcome back. So you've got Lawrence, Ridley, Etienne, and the whole comp and, and the cast of characters in Jacksonville. This is going to be a rocking crowd in Jacksonville. It's their home opener. The defending champion, the defending champions are coming to town. It's going to be a dynamic atmosphere. Again, the NFL, the way the league is set up, it's all about the quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence, Kansas City, Jacksonville. Very exciting. We've got the New York Jets going up against the Dallas Cowboys. So as I mentioned earlier in the program, the New York Jets quarterback Aaron Rodgers done for the season after tearing his Achilles on Monday night against the Buffalo Bills. Zach Wilson is handed the keys, has been handed the keys to the car once again. So, again, the jury remains out on Wilson, but what works for him this time right now, he's got a running game and he's got defense. And they're going to need a whole lot of that as they head to AT&T Stadium, a.k.a. Jerry World in Arlington, Texas, to take on the Dallas Cowboys. So Dallas dismantled their longtime rival, NFC East rival, New York Giants, on Sunday night football. Dak was solid, but this game was all about the defense. It was all about Micah Parsons. It was all about Trayvon Diggs. It was all about Demarcus Lawrence. It was all about also... Osa Odigizuwa, also, it was all about Noah Igbenogany. It was just really a defensive masterpiece on that Sunday night game for the Cowboys. It's their home opener, and it's going to be a rocking crowd at AT&T Stadium. The Jets, again, I don't know how they're going to be emotionally coming in this game with the injury to Rodgers, but nevertheless, it's going to be an interesting game between the New York Jets and the Dallas Cowboys. Sunday night football, the Miami Dolphins take on the New England Patriots. First for the Miami Dolphins, I mean, you talk about a masterful game on the offensive side for the Dolphins last week, beating the Los Angeles Chargers. So far, so good for Tua Tagovailoa. Again, as long as his offensive line can hold up for the most part, he should be good to go. Jalen Waddle was effective in this game as well. But, man, Tyreek Hill, listen – Tyree, there's a potential. If everything goes as planned, knock on wood, Tyreek Hill has the potential to possibly have a 2,000-yard receiving season. If Tua can stay healthy for most of the year, Tyreek can stay healthy for most of the year, it can happen. It could happen. I know it's very early in the NFL season, but it could happen. So the Miami Dolphins had an offensive explosion against the Los Angeles Chargers. They look to continue that offensive momentum when they travel to Foxborough, Massachusetts, to take on the New England Patriots. First New England, Z Ezekiel Elliott was effective in the game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Defensively, they were solid. They're still waiting for Mac Jones to come around. They're still waiting, they, you know, they're still waiting on hopes that he can come around and, and get the numbers that he needs. Now, they're looking for him to turn it up, so to speak, against the Miami Dolphins. It's Sunday night. It's Miami. It's New England. It's a rivalry game. It's an AFC East rivalry game. These two teams have been playing for so long. should be an interesting one between the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. We have a doubleheader on Monday night. First off, the first game of the Monday night doubleheader is the NFC South rivalry game between the New Orleans Saints and the Carolina Panthers. I want to start off for the Carolina Panthers. Growing pains are going to be expected for much of this season. Bryce Young, effective 
despite losing to the Atlanta Falcons, another uh, division rival. Carolina kind of going through the motions right now, the post-Christian McAfee, I mean, excuse me, the post-Christian uh, McCaffrey era, and they're trying to find their way. Um, defensively, Carolina is solid, but it, it really, it's really going to begin, it begins and ends with their rookie quarterback, Bryce Young. So while Bryce is going through the growing pains, they do have a solid running accord with Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. And defensively, Carolina is solid with the likes of Brian Burns, also Derek Brown, and you got Shaq Thompson in the mix. As for the New Orleans Saints, offensively, they couldn't get going early on in the game. Really, the offense was stagnant for really the first three quarters of their win against the Tennessee Titans. But they found holes. They found holes in Tennessee's defense. Tennessee could not get it going offensively. New Orleans was able to capitalize on that. And when you got Derek Carr, even though he got sacked multiple times in this game, he was able to find Michael Thomas. He was able to find his other receivers like Chris Olave. And he was able to make plays when necessary. Not an offensive showcase from Derek, but they were effective enough to get the victory over the Tennessee Titans. As for New Orleans, their defense was really good. Cam Jordan. Offensively, New Orleans, they did the job, but not effective enough. However, when you have, when you have guys like a, a Cam Jordan, when you have guys also like a Marshawn Lattimore, when you have Paulson Adebo, who had an interception as well, Marcus May made plays as well, Carl Grandis, Mario Davis, who is just a, a tackling machine, New Orleans' defense, man, is it's going to be a highlight in this game against their division rival Carolina Panthers. Remember, you have a rookie quarterback in there, and the way the Saints' defense played against the Tennessee Titans, Carolina's going to have to have a lot, a lot of preparation, a lot of game planning for New Orleans' defense. And the second game of the Monday night doubleheader is going to be the Cleveland Browns going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So Cleveland easily beat the Cincinnati Bengals in week one. Nobody expected this at all. I didn't expect it, expect that either, but they handled their business with the likes of Deshaun Watson, Amari Cooper, and the rest of the crew handling their business. The Pittsburgh Steelers got embarrassed. They were embarrassed by the San Francisco 49ers. And, you know, if anybody is all about preparation and making sure that it's on to the next one, it's head coach Mike Tomlin. Mike Tomlin is somebody that's going to make the necessary adjustments, make the necessary keys to get back on track, the keys to remain consistent. And Mike Tomlin, again, has been one of those consistent coaches in the NFL, just consistent in the detail, consistent in everything that needs to be done in terms of preparation for to get over to that next hump. So Pittsburgh was embarrassed by the San Francisco 49ers, last week but they hope to turn around in the Monday night game in a division rival game right in a division against a division rival in this rivalry game the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers all right now it's time for my game of the week all right my game of the week is going to be the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers when you think about the Browns and the Steelers you these are two very proud franchises these are two franchises that have Hall of Fame players Jim Brown also, the Steel Curtain, Terry Bradshaw, Lynn Swan, John Stallworth, Otto Graham, just to name a few. The Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers, both of these teams have not only had Hall of Fame players, but they've also had players that have changed their organizations, that put up some big numbers, had some great moments, some classic moments, in within not just with their respective teams, but, respect, but respectfully in this rivalry. Cleveland and Pittsburgh, division rivals for so long. And these two teams are really mirror images of one another. Both teams play with the toughness. Both teams play with grit and grind. Hey, that's what it is when you play in the AFC North, right? And these two teams, listen, the Cleveland Browns last year, Deshaun Watson having the suspension. He joins the team later in the year. We saw shades of what was to come in the future. And now we're going to get a full season with Deshaun Watson. And so far, so good. Cleveland proved it in the victory over Cincinnati. And now they hope to continue that momentum against a team that 
was embarrassed by the San Francisco 49ers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. We know what Mike Tomlin is going to bring to the table. We know about, quarter, you know, Kenny Pickett. This is his second year in the league. Kenny is hoping to prove his worth. Now, Pittsburgh has an injury. Deontay Johnson's going to be out for several weeks. So that passing game could take a toll, could take a hit in this game and for the next several weeks. However, they have a running back in Najee Harris. And running backs, Pittsburgh, Najee Harris, Cleveland's got Nick Chubb. Listen, these two teams, is, is, this, is, this has been a hard-hitting rivalry for so many decades. And Monday night, this is going to be an awesome one between the Cleveland Browns Steelers, you got Deshaun Watson, you got Kenny Pickett, you got Najee Harris, you got Nick Chubb, you got Amari Cooper, you also got David Njoku, you got Pat Fryermuth. It's going to be a dogfight. And the Steelers, listen, you talk about one of the most dedicated fan bases in the NFL, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the, the terrible towels, they're going to be waving, they're going to be out in full force. And these two teams have a rivalry unlike any other. The Cleveland Browns, versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, my game of the week. All right, before we get on out of here, I just want to give you my picks on who I think will win week two's most important games. The Baltimore Ravens taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. I like Baltimore to win. The Seattle Seahawks versus the Detroit Lions. I like Detroit to win. The Kansas City Chiefs versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. I like Kansas City to bounce back. The New York Jets versus the Dallas Cowboys. I like the Dallas Cowboys to win this game. Sunday night football, the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots. I like Miami to win that game. Game one of the Monday night doubleheader, the New Orleans Saints going up against the Carolina Panthers. I like New Orleans to win this game. And the second game of the Monday night doubleheader between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. I like the Cleveland Browns to take care of the Steelers. So, My picks for week two's most important games are Baltimore, Detroit, Kansas City, Dallas, Miami, New Orleans, and Cleveland. And there you have it. And that's going to do it for another exciting edition of the League Wraparound. Once again, a big special thank you to Sonia Greenfield, Director of Writer Management and Editor, covering the NFC North and NFC East for our turf football. Again, a big special thank you to Sonia for appearing on the program. Until next time, everybody, I'm Matt Robinson saying so long, and you've been listening to the League Wraparound. This week at Albertsons, get yellow or zucchini squash or Roma tomatoes for just 97 cents per pound. Plus, mix and match craft macaroni and cheese. Signature select frozen vegetables or Hunt's canned tomatoes, 10 for $10. Visit Albertsons.com for more deals. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Remember to click like, share, and subscribe. And thank you for watching.